cities. To be clear, this is only one aspect of the, of, the, of the changes to the quality of life in the city that green buildings gives us. But I want to emphasize it's because it's both vital and it's easy to miss. And that's why I'd love to emphasize that. Let it remain in your memories. Let it also stand for the quality of life that we must achieve for the people of our cities. The second thing, of course, um, and I think that really colors much of the discussion, is energy efficiency. You know, energy in our country and in many of our African cities uh, is expensive. Um, incomes are low. Energy efficiency needs to be a priority um, in, in, in our new construction, and it is a priority for Nairobi in our new construction. Yet again, I and my team are open to consultation. We want to discuss with you. We want to hear your ideas, and we want to forge, you know, action, clear action, moving together, and that's why we pose this as a challenge, you know, um, to you. Come and talk to us about your plans and our plans for cutting out residents' energy cost. Earlier when I was talking to Philip, I told him, look, um, actually it came from him, he said, you know, when we have such engagements and we have political leadership, you know, speaking, we all know the governor or the president or the minister is not an expert. What you need from us is the leadership and the commitment that, look, we see this as a challenge, we want to address it, and here we have the experts, you know, we have the scientists, we have the Alliance for Science, we have, you know, the builders, we have, and, and, and so we're saying this platform is open, we see it as a priority, we want you to tell us, and for us to discuss, and for us to design together. And that is why I'd like to quickly introduce um, members of my executive who are here, so that you can know them, get their cards, um, get their business cards, uh, talk to them after this, and let's, you know, work on certain practical things. Um, kindly, if you work with me at the county government, stand up. Thank you. I'll start, I'll start like this, you know, from, from my right. Njenga is my uh, climate advisor, actually, and is working with us both uh, in C40. I'm the vice chair of C40 Cities. I deputize the London mayor. And now we have a co-chair, uh, Aki Sawyer from uh, Freetown. So that is Njenga. He is, he is the expert, you know, he's one of my experts, so please engage with him. Um, we have Malawi from Green Nairobi, um, that is our, our, our sector that deals with environment and climate action. We have Maureen Jerry, also one of my experts, she was the minister in charge of Green Nairobi, but now she's moved um, to uh, business and hustle opportunities. She's leading the effort in solarization of our markets, making sure we have green markets all across the city, and we're building 20 of them this year, um, starting in the next few weeks. Thank you, Maureen. Um, we have Ibrahim Auma. Now he is the Minister for Environment uh, for Green Nairobi, um, and he is really the go-to person. Um, he leads the sector in all our interventions around this topic. Um, it's, it's a coincidence. His chief officer is also Ibrahim, uh, Ibrahim Otieno, <laughs> who is chief officer for Green Nairobi. Um, Patrick Analo is the county secretary. He is the head of our public service in the county government of Nairobi. Um, behind him is Priscilla Mahinda who is the chief officer in my office, and also another Priscilla next to her. <laughs> I think we have a shortage of names <laughs> in Nairobi County. Um, and, and, and she's in charge of the governor's communication unit. Please um, have your seats. Uh, this is a team that I'd love you to engage with, to get to know, and they, they are available um, for us. Um, of course, there's climate, you know, finally. Um, we need you. Um, in the built environment, and of course built environment, more than just housing, gives our people dignity, you know. Um, our, our theme is to create a city of order, dignity, hope and opportunity. Just how the built environment is, gives people a sense of dignity, changes outcomes, reduces, you know, vices. Um, I've seen experiments that have been done, you know about what was done in, in New York many years ago, with just the painting and fixing broken windows, and crime went down more than 30%, just because people felt you know, that the environment they're in is dignified. And so they then reciprocated Hi, Daniel, with the dignity. Uh, I didn't see you. <laughs> Finally, um, and as I've said, we need to align, and we need you to align uh, your construction with our climate standards and to talk to us um, and with our teams on how we can improve our climate profile. We are measuring emissions uh, uh, throughout the city. We are measuring air quality. We know what the hotspots are, and we have interventions that we think can work, we need to hear your ideas. And all of this we can do, all of this we will do. Um, and I want to repeat what I said earlier. We can have a virtuous cycle of jobs, skills, revenue growth, and environmental responsibility. None takes away from the other. But we need to start building the base of skills and incentives right now. 
as it happens, and I'm really excited that our partnership with Kenya Green Building Society has already borne fruit. We have completed a preliminary edge building assessment at my office, which we intend to certify in term for, for COP28 and make it the first edge green, envirom uh, environment, uh, green government building in Africa, if not the world. City Hall is going to be that first uh, you know, green government building because I believe that if we truly intend to build and rehabilitate greener, more resilient buildings in our cities, we need to lead by example. And as a governor, I must lead by example. Um, I got challenged this morning uh, when I was flagging off the e-mobility um, vehicles outside City Hall. And, uh, you know, a team from the UN, I drove one around, it's really nice, you know. Um, but then the team from the UN showed me the UN uh, resident coordinator's vehicle is fully electric. It's quite comfortable. It's an SUV. And so I told my guys, because I, I don't yet, you know, I haven't yet bought a car an official car, please make sure it is electric, you know, so that I drive around with an electric car, CS Analo. I hope it's not too expensive, but I think it's worth it to set that example and make sure it is green, uh, even in, in color. <laughs> the second thing to mention is that um, there will be incentives and opportunities offered by my government uh, for green buildings. You know, and so for the architects coming through our planning system, we're going to offer those incentives, you know, how much you pay. It's going to be cheaper. And uh, in our approval process, um, we're putting that, we're putting that in our finance bill and in our legislation uh, because we understand that we need to worry together. We need to make possible the green transformation and we must then be practical in terms of those incentives. So Nasra, in your, where you wear your other hat in the assembly, make sure that clause passes. You know, you, you guys are doing the finance bill soon. I want to encourage you um, to teach our young people because they are the last frontier that we have. You know, we must teach them the skills they will need to succeed in this line of work and to consider exporting these skills as well. But first, they must be out, you know, to the most vital um, use and practical use, overseeing the construction of homes in a city we can, be, we can be proud of. And we've said, you know, part of that as part of our building code you know, the need for green spaces. You know, we're not going to approve more concrete jungles in our city. There must be green spaces. There must be those provisions in our plot ratios, and that has gone down in our, in our development control um, regulations. Um, I could go on highlighting our efforts in Nairobi, but for today, I'd really like to appreciate all of you um, who have made time to join the Alliance for Science, Kenya Grid Building Society, and the Government of Kenya in championing our cities and mobilizing finance and partnerships for Africa. I wish you well as you kick off the deliberations, as I also wish the different companies that are going to pitch in our different deal rooms from different parts of Africa um, to you know, potential supporters and financiers. I really congratulate all of those who have been brave enough to come showcase their projects uh, later in the day. Um, you really are doing us proud in showing the power of our African stories, and I really love what you started with from Tabu Mbeki. You should have seen how um, President Nelson Mandela was looking at him with such great pride. I think every time I see that, it's really a proud moment to define who we are as, as, as Africans. Um, before I close, really, I just want to mention uh, some of the things we're doing. Uh, we, we, we are so proud, immensely proud, um, as part of our climate action, because people don't see it as that. We have, we have allowed others to define to us what is a climate action point. Yet, it is, it, it is nascent enough for us to actually based on the outcomes that are really uniquely African, to define what our climate actions. One of the biggest programs that we're running, which is why I'm wearing this watch, this is tap to it, is our school feeding program. We've built 10 kitchens, uh, green kitchens, across the city. We're reducing emissions by making sure that we're locally sourcing um, uh, you know, uh, the food. We're using briquettes to cook. And every single day in Nairobi, a quarter of a million children are going to get a meal at less than four US cents that has been made in those green kitchens. That is green action. And that is something that needs support. Because really, part of our climate action plan is protection of vulnerable communities, you know? And the ripple effects, that alone creates thousands of jobs directly. Just in the last 12 months that we've been in office, we've been able to create direct 6,000 green jobs. But the ripple effect, you know, the drivers, the people in the markets, comes to close to 300,000. You know, no one counts that. No one, uh, you know, um, 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 enumerates the value, you know, of, of, of that and the impact. Because unless you discuss it in that way, 
then the people of our cities, of African cities, will again just say, these guys have gone to Nairobi for another high-level talk shop. We must be practical in how we describe what we've done. You know, sustainable food systems is what we're creating. You know, part of, of, of looking into the future is making sure that the human capital development, you know, of our children, if there's nothing in their stomach, there's nothing that will be in their heads. And what is sad is many times cities are left out of this discussion. All interventions when it comes to hunger are focused in arid areas, yet the urban poor suffer the most. We must build resilient cities and feeding the children is that. And so in as much as we've started Africa's largest school feeding program, I'd love to encourage all of you from other African cities to think about it, to work on it. You can imagine the children who are getting 650 grams of a healthy meal are not finishing their meals, they're taking them back home. There is something happening that is not being considered by many of our governments. Um, of course, as I've mentioned, incentivizing green agriculture, I, I mean, uh, architecture through the permit fees um, is something that, you know, might look like you're losing out if you have that myopic, uh, you know, view of, of revenue. But I think that what we save in the long run and what it creates for our, you know, for what we'd have needed to, to spend in the future is an investment. And so we are reducing the permit fees for green architecture and actually making it mandatory for certain aspects to be considered. We are currently uh, building nine, renewing nine estates in Nairobi, um, which are providing 40,000 housing units. And we're making sure that their energy, um, you know, they're, they're green in terms of energy saving fixtures, water saving fixtures, stormwater drainages, as environmental protection facilities. That is a must. We've told all of those line companies um, that, have, that have won the tenders and that have won the bids that this is an irreducible minimum. This must be the character of housing in Nairobi as we move forward. Of course, um, yes, just clap. You guys, what happened? <laughs> And uh, I hope you guys will come with me for my next meeting um, <laughs> down the road. Of course, finally, flood mitigation strategies, we're really working hard. We know El Nino is coming. Um, and so we're focusing on, of course, stormwater drainage, rapid response initiative, clearing all our cities' drainage networks in preparation for the heavy rains, which, of course, are coming as a result of, you know, climate change and as a result of how irresponsible we have been in the past uh, decades. So allow me to, to finish by really giving you a story of the vision that we have. Because I think, as you said, what has been missing is vision and leadership. I see an Nairobi that is prosperous, an Nairobi that is skilled, an Nairobi in which dignity and opportunity are possessions of every resident of this county. I see an Nairobi that is climate resilient. I want an Nairobi that takes care of its environment. And I hope you're ready to join me and to join us in achieving that vision, not just for our Nairobi, but for our African cities, Lazima, Iwak. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the sessions. God bless you.